In this tutorial, I will show you how to turn this summer photo into a winter snow scene in Photoshop. We'll start with this stock photo of a wooden cabin and we'll apply several adjustment layers to create the desaturated look. I will also show you how to add snow to the scene by using a luminosity mask. The snow on the grass and the snow on top of the cabin will be created by using layer styles so that we can give it shape and texture. We'll then add fog and haze to the scene by using the camera raw filter. In this tutorial, you will also learn how to create custom brushes, which we will use for the snow falling in our scene. I will be using a stock photo from Adobe Stock for this project. If you want to follow along, you can download the free watermark version or you can purchase a high resolution photo as I have. Simply go to stock.adobe.com and search for this number. 89089704 and that should bring up the image titled Old Wooden Hut Cabin. And you can simply save the preview to your desktop or Adobe library. If by the time you watch this tutorial the stock photo is no longer available, you can simply use any other image that's similar to this one and follow along. Okay, let's get started with the tutorial. The first thing I'm going to do is create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And we're going to bring down the saturation of the greens. So I'm going to click on the master drop down, select greens and bring the saturation down. You'll notice that not a lot changed because in these greens on the trees and grass and everything else, we have a lot of yellow. So I got to click and drag this icon here to the left and notice as I drag it to the left, the greens are going to start this saturating. I also got to click and drag this white one over to the left as well. Anything in between these two white icons is going to be completely desaturated and between the white icon here and this one here, you're going to see a gradual transition. And actually this one doesn't need to be that far off to the left. I can click and drag that over to the right to about this point. So all the colors in between here and in between here are going to transition into the saturation hue or lightness that I use in these settings. I also want to desaturate the sky, which is obviously blue. So I'm going to go into the blues and bring down the saturation. We also have a similar problem. The blue in the sky is also found in the scions here. So I'm going to click and drag this over to the left. When this icon reaches the edge, it pops in onto the right side here, which I can then click and continue to drag to the left. And I can also drag this white one over further until I find the saturation that I'm happy with. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create snow the snow that is going to be laying on top of the trees and grass. To do so, I'm going to use the channels panel, but I don't want to use one of the channels that's here now. I actually want to make some adjustments and use those adjustments as my channel to create the selection. So what I'm going to do first is add a new black and white adjustment layer, which is going to turn everything black and white. And then I can use this to create my selection. Remember, when you're in the channels panel, white pixels reveal and black pixels conceal. So I'm going to start making adjustments to this image and I'm going to just darken up the cabin here because I don't really want to have that selected. I am going to increase the luminance values of the yellows because there's yellows in the tree and that's going to represent the snow. Also increase some of the luminance values in the greens here and decrease them in the cyans because that's the sky and the blue as well. Magenta really won't have any changes in this particular image. It may on your image and just continue to bring the reds all the way down. Now that I made the changes, you can sort of see what's going to happen. For example, up here, if I zoom in, you'll see that this sort of looks like snow already. So I'm just going to zoom out, go into the channels panel, hold control command on any one of these channels and click on one of those icons, control command click going to make a selection out of the bright pixels. You can come back into the layers panel and you will no longer need the black and white adjustment layer. So I'll just delete that. And then I'll create a solid color, which will be an off white color. And this is going to be the snow that's going to be on the trees. I'm going to press OK. And you can see what we've got there. It's before and that's after. Now in your image, like in mine, you may have some areas that didn't work out too well, like in this area here or this area here. I'm not going to worry about it too much now. I'm going to continue working on the project. And if I need to adjust it later, then I'll come back and make those adjustments. Also, notice how I have some red 
on these flowers here and I actually kind of like that so I'm just going to leave it but feel free to remove the saturation off those flowers if you want to. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to create the snow that's on the ground here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the lasso tool and just make a quick selection around this area here. Then I'm going to create a solid color and it's going to be again an off-white color so maybe something like that. So I'm going to double click on the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. Then I'm going to click on Evelyn and Boss. And then click on the reset button, just so we're all looking at the same thing. And I can increase the size of the bevel here. And that's okay if we have the bevel here in the corner. We're going to fix that later. And I'm also going to add texture. I'm going to click on this arrow here. Then click on this icon here and click on Artist Surfaces. Press OK. Then I'm going to click on the second to last texture, which is that one there. I'm also going to increase the scale and decrease the depth. So maybe something like that. Then at this point, you can come and add more or less highlights, more or less shadows, and just slide that over until you find something that you're happy with. Then press OK. We have a problem with the edge here, as you mentioned before. And to fix that, I'm going to separate the layer styles from the layer and then merge them onto one layer and distort them appropriately. To do so, I'm going to right click on the FX icon and click on Create Layers. Photoshop will then create layers out of each of those adjustments. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply select both of them by clicking on the top one, then hold Shift, click on the bottom one, then press Control E, Command E on the Mac to merge those into one layer. Then if I press Control T, and I'm actually going to collapse this so you can see what's going on and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. If you press Control T, notice that the bounding box go all around the canvas and we don't want it to do that. We want to make it easier on ourselves to edit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control, Command, click on the layer mask thumbnail, which is going to load the selection. Then click on the layer mask icon and it's going to apply that layer mask onto the texture. Then right click on the layer mask icon and click apply layer mask. Now, if we press Control T, Command T to transform, the bounding box is only around the texture and not the entire canvas. So then I can right click on it and choose something like scale. And I can hold Shift, Alt, Shift Option on the Mac, click and drag, scale that out. I can also right click on it and select warp. And I can warp the pixels inside to make a more realistic ground. And I can zoom out just so I can see what I'm doing and sort of get a better angle and better perspective. So maybe something like that, then press enter. And actually, I'm going to just scale that outward just a little bit more. So something like this. I'm going to zoom in and I could also create a texture layer on this area here, but I'm not going to for the sake of time. Instead, I'm going to select the layer mask for the layer titled color fill one. And I'm going to paint with white on that layer mask to enhance the snow effect. And as you can see, I'm not being very precise, but that's going to work. Then I'm going to go into edit, fade, and fade that accordingly. So maybe something like that. And at this point, I'm going to add a gradient overlay to the color fill too, which is the snow hill. So I'll just call that snow hill. And Color fill one is snow on the trees, so I'll call that snow trees. So I'm going to double click on the snow hill layer off to the right there on the space to bring up the layer style window. And then I can click on gradient overlay and maybe adjust the scale, the angle. Click and drag this, move it accordingly, maybe increase the scale again. And bring down the opacity. Something like that, just to give it a little more shape. That's before, that's after. Then I'm going to press OK. I'm going to click on this up pointing arrow to collapse the layer style so we can have a little more room to work with. At this point, I'm going to add some snow to the top of the cabin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the polygonal lasso tool and I'm quickly going to make a selection around the roof. And I'm actually going to zoom in just so I can see it better and I can make a better selection. I'm going to go fairly quickly here, but I would take more time if you're doing this on an image for an actual project. So I'm quickly selecting the areas where I want the snow to be.
Now that I have that selection, I can click on the top layer, then create a new solid color, and it's going to be an off-white color. Then press OK. I'm going to click on the layer mask icon, and I have a Wacom tablet, so I'm going to be able to draw and trace around the edges so the edges are not so straight. So I'm going to make sure I have a hard brush at 100% and the smaller brush, so maybe at about 10 pixels or so. And then I'm going to just paint on the edges here so they're not straight and they look a little bit more realistic. And as I said before, if you're working on your own image or an actual project, just take a little more time and try to get better results. And actually, there should also be some snow right up here, so I'll add that in. And maybe some on this side. And I'm just going to do this one even quicker than the last ones. And if you make a mistake like I did there, you can just press X on the keyboard, switch your foreground color to black, paint with black to hide those pixels, press X again to swap those two and bring white to the foreground color and continue painting. And this is going to be good enough for this tutorial. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply layer styles to this layer to give that texture that we had down here. So I'm going to double click on the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. Then I'm going to click on bevel and emboss and click on texture. And if you're using Photoshop CC 2015, then the same settings are going to apply. If not, you can just apply the same settings to apply it earlier. You may need to make some adjustments. In my case, I think this is good enough. So I'm going to press OK. And usually when you add a layer style, you see areas that you miss. So I missed a little bit there. So I'm going to paint with white in this area there and maybe right up here. So now it looks like the cabin has snow on the roof. One thing you have to think about is if snow is actually falling on this cabin, there would also be snow on top of here. Now, I'm not going to take the time to do it perfectly, but I'm just going to quickly add snow right up here just to fool the eye a little bit more. And we're also going to add snow and haze to this image, so this might actually be good enough. And I'm just adding snow right on these windows. And I'll just add some more right up here. And I'm holding shift as I do that to quickly create straight lines and paint more snow in there. So now I'm just going to zoom out and just fit the image to screen. A little later on, I'm going to show you how to add falling snow onto this scene. And if there were snow falling, there would also be some fog, some haze. So we're going to add that now. And to do so, I'm going to make a merge copy of everything you see here and apply the haze to that one layer. To merge everything onto one layer as a copy, you can press Control Alt Shift E, Command Option Shift E on the Mac, and it's going to be one layer that's a copy of everything that's visible on your canvas. That's that layer here. I'm also going to convert that into a smart object so that I can make adjustments to the filter I'm about to apply. Then I'm going to right click on it and choose convert to smart object so we can apply filters and edit them. I'm going to rename this and call it haze because this is what this layer is going to be. Then go into filter, camera raw filter in the FX icon. Look for the dehaze slider and slide that all the way to the left. If you don't have a dehaze slider, that's because you're not on Photoshop CC 2015 or newer. If you are on Photoshop CC 2015, then make sure that you have the latest version of Camera Raw installed. To find out what version of Camera Raw you have, go into Help, About Plugin, Camera Raw, and you should have at least this version here or something newer. So notice what that did. That layer created haze onto our image and it's bringing an extra level of realism. And you can make adjustments to that by clicking on the Camera Raw filter label and coming in and making more adjustments, but leaving it at negative 100 should work. And you can also click on the layer mask here and paint. So I'm going to click on my brush tool. I'm going to use a soft brush and I'm going to use a large brush, maybe something like that. And I'm going to paint with black since I don't want so much of that haze on the foreground here. All layer masks have something that's like the opacity slider, but they call it density. At 100%, whatever you paint is on there. But if you bring the slider down, you start 
minimizing the effect. You see that? You can see it on this icon here. If I hold Alt Option on the Mac and click, you can see what that does to the layer mask. And I can see that I forgot to paint in this bottom area here. So then I can adjust the density. Hold Alt, click on the layer mask icon again, and see the difference. And that seems to work. So that's what we had before. And this is what we have now. I'm now going to show you how to create snow in Photoshop. One of the best ways of doing it is by creating a custom brush. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to go into File, New, a document that's 400 pixels wide by 400 pixels tall should work. Press OK and select any hard brush, maybe this one here. Click on this icon to bring up the brush panel on the brush tip. Adjust the size of the brush. So maybe bring that down to about maybe 29 pixels. Click and drag and adjust the shape of the brush and then paint with black. So I'm going to make sure black is my foreground color and paint. Then I'm going to increase the size of the brush and rotate it maybe a little bit and paint here. And now maybe I'll even bring it down just a little bit and paint another one about there. And this is going to be the snow brush that we're going to use. I'm going to go into edit, define brush preset and call it snow. Press OK. And now when we paint, we have this, which is not really snow. So I'm going to fill this layer with white by holding control backspace, command backspace on the Mac and maybe adjust the size of the brush or so something like that. I'm going to undo. And then we can come into shape dynamics, increase the size jitter all the way up, angle jitter all the way up, and roundness jitter about 30%. Now when we paint, we have that, which looks a lot more like snow. I can also click on scattering and increase the scattering, maybe even a little bit more. And that looks a lot more like snow. So what I'm going to do now is use this brush to paint in snow in the composition that we're working with. I'm going to click on the cabin tab and then I'm going to close the brush panel. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to paint with white. And that's going to be the snow that's furthest away from us. Then I'm going to create a new layer increase my brush size. And this is going to be snow that's a little bit closer to us. Then I'm going to create one more layer and increase my brush size again. And by the way, I'm increasing my brush size by tapping on the right bracket key on my keyboard and just paint some larger snowflakes and maybe even one or two more really big ones. Something like that. What I'm going to do now is on the first layer, one back here. I'm going to go into filter, blur, motion blur, and angle of 55 seems to be okay, but 33 pixel distance is too much. So I'm going to bring that down to maybe nine pixels. Press OK. Click on the layer two, which is the middle there. Go into filter, motion blur again, and maybe just a little bit more. So I'm going to do one more time motion blur. Click on that. And finally, this one here, the ones that is closest to us. Go to filter, motion blur, but this time hold alt option on the Mac while clicking on motion blur. It's going to bring up the motion blur settings. Then you can increase the distance and press OK. You may also want to decrease the opacity on some of this, for example, the middle one and the one that's furthest away from us. And maybe even the one that's closest to us. So something like that. At this point, your image may need some contrast. It may not. In this case, I think I want to add just a little bit of contrast and I want to add it behind the layers of snow. So I'm actually going to hold shift, click on the top one, click on the bottom one, then press control G, command G on the Mac and just call this falling snow. And right below that, above the haste layer, I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer and I'm just going to use the preset called darker to give it just a little bit more contrast. And if that's not enough for you, click and drag this point down just a little bit further. 
So that's what I'm going to do. So we have our falling snow. We have the layer that's giving us contrast. And we have the haze layer. Now that I look at it, I'm not too happy with the curves layer because we lost a lot of that haze that I really liked. And I actually like the way the cabin looks, but I don't like it that we lost so much haze. So what I'm going to do is just bring down the opacity. And I'm going to paint with white on the cabin just with a regular brush, not our snow brush. And I'm going to press Control I, Command I to invert just to hide all the effects and just paint with white on my cabin here just so the effects applied on the cabin. I really want the cabin to stand out a little bit more. So that's where the contrast is going to be a little bit darker. And I can actually increase the opacity just a little bit. And if I went over the line here like I did, I can just press X and bring down the size of my brush by hitting the left bracket key and painting with black in areas that I want to maintain that haze. Okay, at this point, I'm liking everything about my image except the color. The color is not working for me. So what I'm going to do now is right above this curves layer, I'm going to add a solid color. The color that I'm looking for is a blue color. A blue that looks like this. Then press OK. Then I can go into the blend mode and switch to overlay and bring down the opacity. I just want to get that cold blue feeling and maybe at about 30% will be a good number. And I actually got to bring the falling snow below that layer just so I can get some of that blue on the snowflakes. At this point, you can simply click on the top layer, hold shift, click on the bottom one to select all the layers in between, then press control G, command G on the Mac to put that into a group. And you can see the before and the after.